back in the 1960s, feminists and Marxists together, because many feminists at that stage were still very closely connected to the British left or the French left or wherever the left was um, thriving, and came up with a theory that is, it's not just a theory, it's a way of explaining material reality, which is that gender is a social construct. Uh Biological sex is a reality, and we really shouldn't put too much onto that unless it really matters, such as in the main men's physical strength and our reproductive um, organs. But otherwise, what we're talking about is gender. And gender is what many of us call sex stereotypes. So for men, although many men, especially gay men, or men who are seen as weak or small or not masculine enough, many men also suffer at the hands of bigger, taller, stronger, more heterosexual men Mm -hmm. because they live under the gender tyranny. But ultimately, it's women and girls. So we that's why feminists refuse to call gender, uh, gender roles. We don't think that they are enacted. We don't think that they're played out as Judith Butler would have us uh, believe. They are imposed upon women and girls. And of course, many women and girls play with gender, decide that it's fun, decide that actually this is normal, it's natural. They want to wear spike heels, um, trip around with loads of, of makeup and spend all their salary on having their hair done fine but this isn't something that's innate this is not anything to do with their chromosomes or their genetics in any way and and so feminists said look if it's a social construct then what we need to do is seek to abolish gender because we are a biological sex and there are two biological sex that's it the queers came along um And of course, Judith Butler was at that helm. And she took a very straightforward theory and subverted it slightly, but with enough indecipherable language to make it seem as though it was an interesting theory. And it never was. It was old hat with a bit of a twist. Um, and, And I suppose what it did was it disconnected the feminist analysis and the leftist analysis of gender and it re-essentialized the notion of sex stereotypes. So all of a sudden, we are gender fluid. We can mm-hmm. play as women. We can wear big, heavy workman's boots with a little pink tutu. And we can wear spikes to our nose. And we can go to sex clubs and have sex with loads of women and then loads of men. And we can subvert everything that we're supposed to be doing um, as much as we like. We can be as queer as we like. But at the same time, if a 12-year-old or someone even younger, a female, say, is sitting there thinking, I'm attracted to girls, I have a crush on my best friend, I hate wearing dresses, I absolutely hate playing with girls' toys, I want to climb trees, could she be trans? Could she be trapped in the wrong body? So we've re-essentialized what feminists unpicked. We're not gender critical. I mean, I would never use that term. I'm a gender abolitionist. It would be like saying I'm critical of God when in fact I just don't believe in God. So that, in my view, uh, has been one of the biggest failings um, of the new so-called progressives, that they've re-essentialized gender rather than seek to abolish it. 